مبادي كل فن عشرة الحد والمدوء ثم الثمرة وفضله ونسبه والوادع والاسم الاستمداد حكم الشارع مسائل والبعض بالبعض اكتفى ومن درى الجميع هذا الشرف At the very end it is stated that when you can put these principles together that is the share of the honor you achieve in truly understanding what is tasawuf Imam Malik mentions something important Imam Malik is the great Imam of Ahl Sunnah the Imam of Darul Hijra that is his title Imam Malik Ibn Anas the founder of the Maliki school of fiqh the four one of the four Sunni schools of fiqh Imam Malik based his school of fiqh or his madhab on what is called a'mal ahl al-madina the actions of the people of medina that was the most important consideration for him to derive his fiqh rulings and his rational rationale his reasoning for that is that ahl al-madina the people of medina they live with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they live with the sahabas they saw islam in practice and therefore their actions what they did as a collective whole is the best representation of the sun of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imam malik imam of darul hijra he chose as his kursi his seat for teaching the same spot that sayna umar ibn al khattab would sit down in masjid Masjid Nabawi to deliver his dars when he was the khalifa this is imam malik he said man tasawwafa wa lam yatafaqqaha faqad tazandaqa wa man tafaqqaha wa lam yatasawwaf faqad tafassaqa wa man jama'a baynahuma faqad tahaqqaqa he said Whoever acquires tasawwuf without fiqh may become a heretic, may, may go out of the fold of Islam. And whoever studies fiqh without tasawwuf may become unrighteous, fasik. And who, whoever combines both of them will achieve spiritual reality hakika faqat tahaqqaqa this is important for us to recognize because if we engage in tasawwuf without adherence to fiqh we may be, we may be led astray and if we focus on fiqh without tasawwuf there there is a dryness in our islam there is a vacuum an inner vacuum which is there and whenever there is a vacuum something must of necessity fill the space and we are seeing this manifestation in the muslim ummah today this vacuum is being filled by extremism people who focus on fiqh without tasawwuf they have this va- this spiritual vacuum in them and it's filled in most cases with extremism and you see the nature of the extremist group attests to this Imam Abu Hasan al-Shadri mentioned that whoever does not study deeply this discipline of tasawwuf may die persisting on medicines 
without being aware of it. The principles. Ten of them, we'll go through a few. The time will allow us, inshallah. The first one, in the Mabadi Kulla Difan in Ashara Al Had. That the foundational principles of Tasawwuf, of Sufism, ten principles. The first, Al Had. Al Had refers to the definition, the tarif of what is Tasawwuf. And the, the root of this goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want us to understand this, that Tasawwuf Sufism is not something that came later. Some of the Orientalists, they make this claim that tas Tasawwuf Sufism was introduced later. We are saying no. It comes from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. Hadith of Jibreel, one of the five foundational hadith in Islam. One of the questions that Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi ihsan. Tell me what is ihsan. And the Prophet alayhi salam defined ihsan or describes it saying, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ to worship Allah as if you can see Him. So this concept of mushahada, this is, this is now the basis of mushahada in the, the, the spiritual training of the Sufi. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ And if you cannot see Him, then you must know that He sees you. Allah sees everything. Allah knows everything. He is Al-Basir, sees everything. Al-Alim, he knows everything. And this is a muraqaba now. We know, we are conscious that we are always in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a dis description of tasawwuf. This, this striving for spiritual purification. Imam Ibn Atta'illa mentions that the scholars have stated more than 2,000 definitions of tasawwuf. And he said all of them is combined in one statement, which is what I want to share with you. We mentioned tasawwuf, ihsan or ilm al-ihsan. But he says that all of these 2,000 plus definition can be Included in one statement says Sidq at Tawajjo Ilallahi Ta'ala Bima Yardahu Wamin Haythu Yardahu Sidq at Tawajjo Ilallahi Ta'ala Truthful submission to Allah with what pleases Him and by what pleases Him. This is the comprehensive definition of tasawwuf. Sidq al-tawajjuh ilallah ta'ala. That is truthful, sincere, total turning to Allah. And is based also on the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Udkhulu fi silmi kafatan. Enter into total submission to Allah. Udkhulu fi silmi kafatan. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. So, sirk at tawajjuh ila Allah ta'ala. Imam Shadri says that this is exemplified or manifested that everything you do, everything you do, you seek no audience for your action except Allah. <laughs> Seek no audience for your action except Allah. This is this is the litmus test, the rule of man. Do you want to do anything? You want to say anything? Is it for Allah? Or is it something else? Subhanallah. 
This is a constant reminder and a constant struggle. This is what tasawwuf is all about. This definition, Sidq at-tawajjuh ila Allah Ta'ala bima yardahu wa min haythu yardahu. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam says in the hadith, innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq. I have been sent with the sole purpose of perfecting good morality, good conduct, etiquette. Adab, akhlaq, tasawwuf. Whoever has more adab, they have more tasawwuf. Whoever has more akhlaq, they have more tasawwuf. That is what tasawwuf is all about. That is what we strive for. So the mawdu'a, which is the second principle, is to get to know Allah. How do we get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And in so doing, this subject or subject matter of tasawwuf, the mawdu is the purification of the soul, the purification of the heart. That is what it deals with. Once again, and the other important point I want us to recognize tonight is that tasawwuf is not foreign to Islam. Tasawwuf is not different from Islam. Tasawwuf is at the very center of Islam. Tasawwuf, in fact, is the essence of Islam. This is what it is. It is not foreign to Islam. Because that's another misrepresentation that the non-Sunnis, for example, would say that the South, the Sufis are not part of Islam. And there are some groups of people that would declare Sufis as non-Muslims. They've actually made fatwa to this. So we need to understand that tasawwuf is at the very core of Islam. In fact, it is what beautifies our Islam. It is what takes our Islam to a higher level. It is what takes every aspect of our practice of Islam to a higher level. The salah that you perform, you can follow fit and perform salah with, it, with its basic requirements. But what gives life to your salah is tasawwuf in the salah. As Imam Ibn Atta'ila says, Al-A'malu suwarun qa'imatun wa arwahuha Wujudu sirril ikhlasi fiha. Actions are like lifeless forms. Actions that we do are like lifeless forms. But what, but what brings our action to life is the presence of ikhlas, of sincerity in that action. That is the subject now of tasawwuf. Sincerity in what we do. Fiqh doesn't deal with that. The rules of fiqh doesn't tell you about ikhlas. You go through the fiqh of salah. The fara'in actions in the fiqh of salah. The wajibat actions in the fiqh of salah. The sunan actions in the fiqh of salah. The mandu, nawafil actions in the fiqh of salah. None of that has anything about, about ikhlas. It is tasawwuf that deals with that. So, I, I, I want us to understand tonight the central position, the central role of tasawwuf 
in our Islam. It is not something foreign. And so, Imam Malik, he says, if you have fiqh without tasawwuf, there are many bad consequences that may come out of that. And similarly, tasawwuf without fiqh leads to bad consequences as well. We need to be mindful. And so, Imam Ibn Ajiba in his share of Kawaid at Tasawwuf, this is a beautiful book, Kawaid at Tasawwuf. He talks about the principles of Tasawwuf. He says, among the Kawaid, among the principles, if anyone brings anything to you in the name of Tasawwuf, which is not based on Quran and Sunnah, throw it against the wall. In other words, reject it. We are bounded by Quran and Sunnah. If, if you want to see someone who exemplifies the Sunnah of the Prophet look at the Sufi Shaykh. In every detail of his life, he is living Sunnah. This is a true Sufi Shaykh. And you know, many of you, you know the great Shaykhs of our Ummah. You've heard about them. You've read about them. Some of you met great sheikhs. You've seen this. Their life is dedicated to the Sunnah of the Prophet This is what they are. And so this principle of Tasawwuf establish an important relationship in three levels of our Islam. Based once again on the Hadith of Jibreel Salam. Akhbirin yan al-Islam, akhbirin yan al-Iman, akhbirin yan al-Ihsan. The three questions. Which is Sharia. As a portion of Tasawwuf, we are obligated to following the Sharia. No one is above the Sharia. Secondly, Tariqah. The next level after Sharia ah is Tariqah, which is a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Literally, linguistically, Tariqah is a way, a road, a path. And it is a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Tariqah, the Sufi Tariqah, they are a vehicle or like a vehicle that takes us to Allah. We go on that vehicle in order to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are not going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to re-examine ourselves. The, the tariqah, the Sufi tariqah is like a vehicle to take us to Allah. And the role of the Sufi shaykh is to take us by the hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. to take us by the hand to Allah. And so you hand yourself over to the Shaykh because only then he can take you. If, if, if you don't hand yourself over to the Shaykh and he's trying to take you by the hand, you're pulling him in another direction, you're not going anywhere. The vehicle is not moving. You must hand yourself over to the Shaykh, take you by the hand to Allah. He says, here you are in front of Allah. That is the role of the Sufi Shaykh. So, Tariqah. And the third level, which is level of Ihsan, or Hakikah. Sharia, Tariqah, Hakikah. Three levels. The principles of Tasawwuf. Hakikah. And what this is, it's our inner reality. Our inner reality. And at the end of the day, this is what matters. This is what matters. Who and what we are. When we reach our final destination, of this journey, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. That's the journey. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Imam Fudail ibn Iyad used to tell the students about this. this inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. This is a journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final destination of that journey is the day of judgment. 
Yawm al Qiyamah, we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the haqiqah is what matters now. What is our inner reality? What is our spiritual state? Who and what we are when we present ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ on that day, nothing benefits us except the one who comes to Allah with a clean, pure, wholesome, upright heart. That is what matters, our inner reality. And the way of the soul is to prepare us for that, to purify us. So we can be this special person.